beer, 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 beer. All right. Guys, it's Christmas. And there's no Jake. What did I get for Christmas this year? I did a, a gift exchange and somebody sent me two gifts. But what could they be? Holy shit, it's beer. This guy from Florida sent me two beers. I told you, Taylor, this one was too hard to get off. You he say as morning wood is sitting right in front of you? And good gourd. Good gourd, it's morning wood. <laughs> um, this guy sent me two beers from Florida saying that these are probably two of the best beers that Florida has to produce. And I'm here to test that. And if I had his use, his Reddit handle, I would say it right here. But I'll give I'll put that in post. All right. So I think I pulled up both of these on Beer Advocate already. Uh, let's start with Good Gore. <laughs> Good Gourd uh, is brewed in Florida by Cigar City Brewing. It is rated a 4.27 out of 5 on uh, Beer Advocate. It is a pumpkin ale and has a 0.85% by volume and is only available during the fall. And I guess to use proper brew dude's nomenclature, let's tap this one off. And not fail the second time. Oh god, it's already overflowing. Oh no! And, without having Jake here, I also don't have any fancy studio lighting, so we made do with what we had. This is an entire solo project. You can smell a little bit of pumpkin in this. And it does have a really nice, like, dark amber, or not even really dark, but a, more of an amber color. It's kind of like a Shiner Bach, almost. And it poured with just a little amount of head. Just a, just a modest amount of head. But that smell hype? Give that a solid four. You know, it's probably the best pumpkin beer that we've had. In all honesty, <laughs> Taylor. I will give that taste a four. We have an unreleased episode of entirely pumpkin beers, and we didn't like a single one of them. So spoiler alert for whenever that episode comes out. But this is not a bad pumpkin beer. I'd be able to sit back and have a couple of those. So, overall, what was our scoring again there, dear? It was smell. Smell, which is a four. Uh, taste. Tummy feel. Tummy feel is a... I'll give that a three on the tummy feel. Everyday drinkability. I'll give that a... Well, we don't really do halves, so I'll have to give that a three. I don't know how expensive this beer was to purchase, so I'm going to have to give it a three. Just because if I knew that it was a really expensive beer, I would not drink it every day. But I have no idea, so I'm going to put it like right in the middle of the road. Did you already say what beer it was? Yeah. Ah. Um, so that's Tummy Fuel, that was Smell. Taste, kick, it has a very modest amount of kick. I'm gonna give that kick a two. And what was the last one, dear? Everyday drinkability. I already did everyday. Everyday yeah. drinkability, tummy feel, taste, smell, smell and, and kick. kick. Oh, hey, how about that? So, I'm blanking. Taylor, what did I already give these scores? 
Jake can add it up later. Exactly. It'll be in post. Oh, also, since I only have two beers on this episode, I decided to do a small, very small, no-no beer cup, because I didn't want to waste these beers. I actually plan on drinking the rest of these. And no, we are not sponsored by Crazy Mountain. But I just happened to have three Crazy Mountain glasses. Let's tap off the next one. You have morning wood? It is morning wood. And inside the uh, bottle cap says, peace, love, and beer. I didn't know this was Joe's Crab Shack. Peace, love, and crabs. But, good gourd, it's morning wood now. Dang. Tried to make it down her shirt. It didn't work. Ooh, that is dark. Jake would fucking love this. All right, let's switch over to morning wood. Morning wood. Brewed by the Funky Buddha, Funky Buddha Brewery, has a 4.66 out of 5, which gives it a world-class rating on Beer Advocate. It is 12% by volume. Oh, shit. <laughs> and is a American Porter. The notes on this are, what's better than beer for breakfast? A little morning wood. How about a little morning wood? This imperial version of maple bacon coffee porter is aged in bourbon barrels for months, leading the smoothness, leading smoothness to smoky, salty, rich combo of maple syrup, fresh roasted coffee and bacon. Holy shit, I'm about to have breakfast. Again. Again. All I've eaten today is a very, uh, actually good helping of Waffle House. I did not have to shit my pants out later. That really does smell like breakfast, though. I'm gonna give that smell like a five. But that is a some aged beer, which means it's probably it's gonna be extremely complex. And that smell almost smells like a prairie bomb. Almost. This would be. I'm probably gonna change my assessment later, but it would probably be really good on ice cream. However, with the coffee, bacon, and maple syrup, actually, all of those are actually in ice cream already. This would be really good on ice cream. Probably. I don't know. I haven't had a sip of it yet. But that smell hype, I'm going to give that a solid five. That is damn good. That that really does. That is fucking smooth. That is fucking smooth. That's why I liked it. That is better than a prairie bomb. I don't like a lot of stouts, and I like that. You get hey. You get Dan, a, I like morning wood. <laughs> I'm going to drink the rest of that, but I can't stop drinking this. It's just so good. It, it is very, very smooth. You can kind of taste like a chocolatey coffee there in the middle of it. And then you really get the uh, barrel on the end of it and it really mellows it out. It gives it a nice little, little bite. And I will say, this would be extremely good on some fucking French vanilla ice cream. Holy shit. It's so amazing. I don't like stouts. Taste, five. Tummy feel. I imagine at the end of this bottle, my tummy's going to be very heavy. So I'll give it a four. Uh, smell, five. Taste, already to taste. So taste, tummy feel, smell, uh, everyday drinkability. 
This is a dessert beer. There's no way around it. They try to play it off as breakfast. This is dessert. This is this is brunch. This is a brunch beer. Oh my god. I lost my train of thought already. I, I'm, I'm just so caught up Kick. in this beer. Kick. Honestly, I'm going to give it a five. This is a fucking good beer. I think overall that's a 24. Uh, 23 or 24. That's going to be like the highest beer I've rated. And it's a stout. Aside from the legendary Live Oak Hefeweizen. But, as all good things... I must pour a splash of this into the no-no cup. Which just instantly turns this into just a cold brew coffee. And just swirl that around. You can probably hear it in the mic. No, no, I can't. I really can't hear that in the mic. But give that a couple of swirl. I'm gonna put a little bit more good gourd in that. And ladies and gentlemen, the smallest no-no beer cup that we will have. It doesn't smell bad. That's actually really good. Taylor. It takes away the heaviness of that stout. It takes away the heaviness of that stout. It makes it really light, but you still only taste the stout. And Taylor does not agree. Taylor is not a fan. But, hence why I only did a tiny no-no cup. I didn't want to waste two really good beers. The guy that sent it to me, uh, he sent me a couple other small gifts, but these were bubble wrapped and duct taped shut just in case of pressure differential. Um, and enclosed in the note was, these are two of the finest brews that Florida has to offer. And he delivered. He fucking delivered. These are fucking good. Dan's going to get wasted. Well, maybe in a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly happy with these. I'm really glad that I decided to record these instead of just enjoying them for myself. But, uh, look forward to either this episode coming up really quickly. So, because this would, would be extremely easy to edit, look forward to a episode by the end of the year. But until then, I'm Dan. Jake isn't here. But as he will say, go have a pint on us. Check your local listings.